Welcome to the She Speaks to Inspire podcast. I'm your host, Julia Kraft, your authentic expression mentor and public speaking coach. She Speaks to Inspire is an empowering public speaking podcast for women with public speaking fear. Unlike other podcasts on public speaking, She Speaks to Inspire not only gives you tips to be a confident communicator under pressure, but also helps you regulate your nervous system for less anxiety, learn lifestyle practices to reduce burnout and overwhelm, and reconnect with your feminine leadership presence for more authenticity and comfort in your skin. I believe it's the quiet ones, especially the quiet women who have the most important ideas. I believe the world really does need your voice. So let's dive in. Maybe you've heard that public speaking fear is the number one fear. Maybe you've heard that statistic thrown around and maybe you've also felt like, well, it's just me. Everybody's totally fine with public speaking and I'm the one that can't figure this out. Let's talk about that and figure out if that's true. First of all, in terms of the statistics, in my research, I've found that you can find a range of different statistics online just with a simple Google search about what is the number one fear. A very popular study showed that the number one fear was public speaking fear, or they called it speaking in front of a group, followed by other fears like insects, spiders, snakes, heights, deep water. And then down, I think it was number seven, was fear of death. And this study is where Jerry Seinfeld got the the joke. He says, if that statistic is true, it means that if we're all at a funeral, we'd rather be (laughs) in the casket than up giving the eulogy, which is funny, but is it true? You know, if we were all at a funeral, would we really truly decide to be in the casket instead of up giving the eulogy if we had the choice? When you put it like that, probably not, right? But it's this perceived fear because public speaking fear is an anticipatory fear. And it's something that's more real to us (laughs) than death. Across all statistics that I've seen, public speaking fear is definitely in the top 10. It's usually in the top five of fears. So that's all to say that public speaking fear is incredibly common. I would also say that public speaking fear is a self-reported thing. You know, those kind of studies are based on people self-reporting and public speaking fear is something that many, many people have a lot of shame about. So I wonder if the data is correct. Also, public speaking fear is so common, it almost becomes an expected thing. I would suspect that 100% of people experience public speaking fear, but only a small percent of people are going to say that it's something that really, really holds them back. Those are the people that have the panic attacks that are are really overtaken by anxiety. So if we all have some version of public speaking fear, it's important to understand why that fear happens in the first place. It's a universal thing. It's not just you. (laughs) That maybe is the most important takeaway from this episode. You know, it's a universal thing to be afraid of public speaking. And this is why. Fear of public speaking, if you feel into it for a moment, it's a primal panic. Primal panic. Now, what I mean by that is if we go back to our roots, if we go back to our ancestors, let's think thousands of years ago when we lived more in tribes or clans, in family units, you know, and things were very different societally. Can you imagine if you were set apart from your group, from your people, and all your people then turned to face you? Can you imagine the panic? Being set apart from the group, being put on the spot, it's a primal 
panic. Think of a wild animal, the kind of wild animal that lives in packs, you know, like wolves or gazelles. They, they're social animals, so they rely on the pack for safety. As soon as a gazelle is separated from its pack, it's herd, and it's on its own, it's incredibly vulnerable to predators, to the elements, and the mammal's body will start to experience primal symptoms of fear. The pupils will dilate, opening the eyes wide and sh sharp gaze to, to find the pack find the herd. Muscles will get tense, breath gets shallower, blood flow goes to the limbs to run. This is the unconscious primal experience of public speaking for us humans, us mammals. Think about your own symptoms. You have similar symptoms when all of a sudden a group of people turns to look at you. You know, the sense of my muscles are tight, my eyes are piercing like deer in headlights kind of feeling. My breath is shallow. I want to run away, but I can't. So I just freeze and try to get through this and survive. It's more comfortable being part of the group. It's more comfortable to be one-on-one -on -one for a lot of introverted women because they feel there's safety there with the one-on-one -on -one connection. This is why public speaking fear is so common. It's why we all experience it on some level. So what it comes down to is do you know how to regulate your own nervous system? Do you know how to relate to public speaking fear in a way that empowers you or are you relating to it in a way that keeps you stuck? Let's talk about what you can do to reduce fear and increase your confidence because it is possible. First of all, I want you to have lots of compassion for yourself. This is a universal experience. It's not just you you. Then it can be helpful to use a little bit of logic and activate your frontal cortex. You know, this is the part of our brain that has developed over time as humans to be able to rationalize and think things through instead of just responding from that emotional impulse place of, of the primal response. So utilize your logic. Lean back. Can you be objective? When you do this, you'll probably realize you're safe right now with things exactly as they are with your boss over there judging you, you're safe. Not knowing what to say in response to an out of left field kind of question, even then you're safe. We start to use our logic, we can see, okay, objectively, I am safe right now. My survival is safe. If you start looking for all the ways that you are safe, you might be surprised how many there are. How do you know that you're safe? In our modern world, there are so many comforts, right? And I think it's a really great way that we can start to increase our feeling of safety on a primal level and retrain our nervous systems as a species. Right now, as I record this podcast for you, I have these very soft, cushy socks on. They feel so cozy. My cat is down by my feet all curled up. There's that feeling of warmth from seeing him curled up. I feel safety in the fact that there are four walls around me. I feel safety in the fact that the sun is pouring in through the windows right now. I feel safety through the fact that I'm breathing and that my heart is beating. Safety is felt through the senses as a felt sense of being solid and grounded. Safety is also something that you can start to realize is, is there more on a mental level or an energetic level. For example, with this podcast, I can turn my thoughts towards all the women that will listen to this and get so much value from it and turn my attention away from those that might not get value from it or might not like how I go about things. You know, you judge me in some way. So I can turn my thoughts towards things that bring safety, right? I have that control. However, never when you're doing this kind of work with your logic, never forget that you're a primal body as well. We are not rational beings <laughs> entirely. For sure. We're actually dominated by our subconscious, which is our body. So while you might be talking to yourself and looking for things around you and they start to impact you, feel, make you feel a little bit calmer, make sure to also do practices on purpose that bring you back into your body. So things like deep breathing, taking a breath that's nourishing, things like shaking yourself loose and letting go of tension. When you engage with your body in this moment in a way that is free and open and expressive, 
you are claiming your safety. It's worth saying that the primal panic around public speaking is never gonna fully go away for you or for anybody. It's essential. <laughs> it's part of being a human being. I wonder if we'll evolve out of it eventually, you know, having this primal panic thing where our nervous systems are sort of always on a little bit of edge in response to things in our environment, because there's so many things in our environment now these days, you know, notifications from our phones and advertisements around it. There's so many things we're responding to that create this habitual stress that our adrenal glands are firing off all the time. I wonder if we'll evolve in some way over time, but it's going to take a little while. So it's worth saying that this primal panic, we don't expect it to go away for you, most likely. However, what I want you to get to, what I'm passionate about women growing into, is a relationship with that primal panic that doesn't stop them in their tracks, but is a compassionate one. So yes, I believe that public speaking fear is the number one fear, and it's not just you because everybody experiences it. But now you know what to do. You're going to use your logic, you're going to use your compassion, and you're going to get into your body and out of your head to help you learn to regulate your own experience of your nervous system in ways that support you to show up at your best and not allow that fear to hold you back. Thanks for listening. This has been She Speaks to Inspire with Julia Kraft, your authentic expression mentor and public speaking coach. I'm so glad you joined me. And I hope you got so much out of this episode. If you want to learn more about Speak to Inspire training programs and get inspired, head over to speaktoinspire.com or follow us on Instagram at She Speaks to Inspire. Never forget, the world needs your voice and it's time for you to speak to inspire. See you on the next episode.